I laughed. What's that? Lots of animals. Turn right. More houses here since the last time I was here, Joan. Go clear to the end of the road, and there's a gate there, and you're going to stop there. Okay, stop here. On the other side of this gate is an 80 acre piece of property that my grandpa Waterman owned. And when he died, and so all the time he owned it, I used to come up here with him and go raise corn and beets and alfalfa. But we never, we didn't get there the road we took. The only way you could get there was was uh, going further south, about four miles, and you turn right and head west, and you follow a canal bank, and then you and then you turn and go north again, and then you have to drive down through this wash called the drunkard's wash and it was a very primitive road and you go up the other side of the wash and on the on that north side of the wash was this 80 acre piece of ground and it's, it's called the and still is called the Farron place and so I used to drive tractors and do everything else up here why is it called the Farron place because it was owned by previously owned by somebody I don't know if it was called Farron Place because it was owned by a man by the name of Farron or if it's named after the particular geological formation because this is on a Farron formation in here. Oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, well, it, there is a geological strata it's called both. Farron. Huh, okay. Anyway, uh, and after, after he died, he left this property to six of his seven children. Uh -huh. The seventh one, he disinherited her for many reasons. And so the six children was my mother, and Uncle Russell, and then my two twin aunts, Barbara and Beatrice, and then uh, um, Alice and Betty. And they're all dead now, except for my Aunt Barbara, who lives out in Nevada. But anyway, after, long after Grandpa died, the oil company came in here, and you remember looking on the map, you see all those little round places? Yeah. Well, they're all over down here. And they drilled, they, they got permission to drill on this property here, and so this road right here was actually built by the gas company. Because it goes over to a gas well. It's a very uh, productive gas well. It has been for years. And it's, it's a gas that comes off of coal beds. There's a big deposit of coal underneath all this ground in here. And it's emitting, I forget what the name of the gas is. It's methane, isn't it? Uh, maybe it's methane. Anyway, so they've been getting royalties for years, Gamma Bonnell used to get checked for two or three thousand dollars a month, and it's a lot less than that now. And when after she died, oh, also, in addition to the gas well on here, there was other gas wells on other property that <coughs> my grandpa used to own, but he sold the pr the real property, but he kept the mineral interest in his name. So this property right here, we own the property and the mineral interest. And there's other property here in Carbon County where we don't own the property, but we own the mineral interest. Hmm. Except for myself, a few miles south of here, under the highway, Highway 10, the highway belongs to the property, but I personally own the gas right, the mineral rights. So I get a check every year for 30, 40, 50 bucks <laughs> for the gas that's produced off of a well that's in that same, that's in section 33, this is section 30 right here. 
they're allowed to drill four wells per section. Hmm. So the, the, the mineral rights have to be shared with all the adjacent property owners. And when my mother died, then instead of dividing the property up again, we deeded it all over to uh, this Fair and Place Properties LLC that I'm the manager of. Right. And so I get checks every month. <coughs> I get of uh, all the royalties that come off of this. Uh, for instance, if there was enough gas coming off of here that it, you, it produced eight thousand dollars worth of gas a month, seven eighths of that goes to the gas company. The other one eighth, which would be a thousand dollars, goes to the owners of the property. They get one eighth. They get twelve and a half percent of the royalties. Okay. So that one thousand dollars, theoretically, gets divided up six ways to the six families. So I get one sixth of six thousand dollars, and I put that in the bank. And at the end of the year, after it all adds up, then I divide it up five ways between myself. I owned a. Th I would have got a third of that, and Gary got a third of it. And now Feline gets a third of it, and then. Michael and Richard and Dutch, they get the other third. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, and I don't have a key to get through the gate there, but that's our property. There is, a, if, if we get on Google Earth, I can show you with this property. You can't get on it with your iPhone. Uh, I tried just pulling up that uh, Phelps Lodge. Back to McDonald's where they have free Wi Fi. Okay, we will so. do that then. Yeah. Anyway, on the on the north end of this property, they have all these trees, mm -hmm. and my uncle uh, Arthur Williams would come up here every summer and cut down a bunch of these trees, most of the dead wood, and take them home and split them up and stack them up. And he'd had he's got a giant, <laughs> he's dead now, but he had a giant pile of firewood that he could burn all winter. Sure. Love it. And also, while I was working here, when my grandpa grew sugar beets, he would have the the he'd have the Indians come up and do the thinning. Yeah. And he had an old Plymouth car, and I was probably about 12 years old, and he taught me how to drive that car. So at 12 years old, I was driving a car, and when the Indians wanted, wanted to go to town, he would have them get in the car and have me drive it and drive them uptown here, because yeah. uh, up north here, is the county fairgrounds and then you go you know where that holiday motel was well the road comes down right by there yeah. and you have to cross over the canal bank in fact the canal that runs through here my grandpa helped and his father helped build the canal originally here in the early 1900s so all this land right here he bought for three cents an acre huh. well, if we, can you still go over by the fairgrounds and see the gas well from there yeah, but I don't know if we'll have time. It's e easier to see it from... No, you can't see it because the trees are too thick. You can drive right down to the canal, but the trees are so thick, you can't see it. But if you look closely, right through there, you see a white pole sticking up. Oh, yeah. Well, that's where the gas well is. Oh, I don't see it. Well, it's over there. Just to the left. And most of the gas wells around here are those big things that go up and down like this. Uh -huh. Well, my, my Uncle Arthur didn't like the look of those, so he talked him into using a different, totally different type, kind of pump uh -huh. that's uh, housed in two, 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 uh, two big metal buildings. So it looks like you can't even, you don't, you don't, know, you don't even know it's a gas well there, wow. except that it's totally self-contained and it's got a radio tower with it because all the, all the controlling of the gas wells mechanics is it's done by remote control by the gas company. Right. Nobody even has to come in and make any changes to it. They want to turn it on or off. Well, it's not very far. We can walk over there. You can't get 
through the gate. I can't. You, you <laughs> could. Yeah, if you want to walk over there, go ahead. Oh, you want to walk over there? What? Want to walk over there? It's not Where? very far. To the well? Yeah, shut your car off. Uh, shut your car off. Well, it's not his car, George. But... Come on, let's go look. Alrighty. Cattle guard right there, they're balancing on. Oh, that's why they're. Oh. And his dad isn't in a better condition either. Well, he's going to send out, send out photo reconnaissance. So you're gonna do photo reconnaissance, huh? Yes. There's a big pull and a big drop off right there. Yeah. And I'm not strong enough to risk that. Aren't you thin enough to just slither through those bars? Well, yeah, maybe one way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey John. Yeah. There's one other landmark that prominent landmark that you can't even see from here but up in, up in that mountain range on the low lowland part of it there's a big tall rock spire called promontory point uh -huh. it's a how can i describe it it's a giant tube of rock very thin but very very tall and all the time that i was plowing up here or planting you know, they tell you if you want to do a straight row of something, you look at something far yeah. away. Well, that promontory point thing is what I would look at. Yeah. Yeah. If we get another part of town here, we can see that promontory point. Yeah. It's quite a unique geologic feature. couple years ago, right after we bought this car, we come down here and we was going to go drive over to this place, but we went on the south end where I told you, you have to follow the canal bank yeah. and you have to drive down off the canal bank and follow this road and go down to the wash. Well, as soon as we got off the road to the canal bank and the car I centered on the uh, tailpipe or, and broke a bracket. So we finished the rest of our trip with a rattling muffler. <laughs> so there's no more off-road driving than this thing. Oh, 
another little neat story that happened to me up here. I used to come up here all the time with my uncle Harvey Randall to do the farming. And he would always bring put a twenty two rifle in the truck with him. And but it was close enough to, when it come lunchtime we'd just drive back down to my grandpa's for lunch. Yeah. But it was, uh, here at noon one time we got in the pickup truck and started heading back home. We had to drive across this field, across this bouncy plowed field. Uh -huh. The truck was going up and down and he was driving. And <laughs> we saw a pheasant out here to the right, about from here to that, see that tie sticking up over there? Yes. That's part of the fence. He says, get that rifle and see if you can shoot that pheasant. I said, yeah, sure. So I did, I got the rifle out, took careful aim and shot the pheasant. And I actually hit it, and I was so surprised. <laughs> Turn the camera could, off. I was so surprised that I could hit that pheasant driving along in the truck. Anyway, he got out and went over and got the pheasant and uh, picked it up and brought it home and cleaned it and we ate it no for kidding. dinner that night. <laughs> well, accidents happen, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what'd you see? Go ahead. You didn't see any buildings? I saw a heck of a lot of firewood. Did you see any buildings? Did you see any buildings? Yeah, there was a little white shed thing. Yeah, that's them. That's the, uh, there's two buildings. There's this one here and this one here. And this is the antenna right here. And what was up with all those little Control pit antenna. things? Yeah. With the... And see the clearing right here? It's all gravel. That's what you see from Google Earth. Yeah. yeah. And then what's up with the little pit thing majigs with the covering on them? Yeah, those the, are pit thing majigs. The corrugated. Well, there's a there's a uh, uh, valve or something. Yeah, there's underground pipe here that pipes the gas from each well over to a uh, processing plant. But you see, look at this map right here. See this road right here that kind of goes that way, and then right here. Well, it's following the canal, and that 80 acres that, that we're on uh, goes up here, and across here, and down there like that. And actually. One third of the 80 acres is in the wash. It's totally useless. And the other third is on the south side of the wash. But that wash, when it gets some severe runoff in it, it actually erodes some of the farmland. I bet they've lost about 15 acres of farmland just because it got eroded in the wash. Okay, well, let's go back out and head south. Wait, see that tree up there? Yeah, that's, that's probably, well, undoubtedly, that's something that my <laughs> uncle put together. Yeah. yeah, Grandpa, see the black cat? Funny. Oh, uh -huh. there's a black cat. Crossing our path. <laughs> 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 okay, well, see the tree to the right of that greenish box? Yeah. That's where the firewood was. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's next? We're gonna go south and see if we can park at the old farmhouse. What we were hoping to do was to sell this land right here to this developer right here, but there's no demand for houses anywhere anymore. Yeah. Another thing I thought would be neat is to uh, uh, put some windmills on this land, but I don't think we have enough wind. Strange. 
tørser. Ja, den laver sig. Så det er det en anden vej ind til at gå. Now, stop right here at the stop sign for a few minutes. If you look straight ahead to the mountain, see that very highest peak up there? Yeah. I've been up on top there. My friend and I climbed up there from Helper. We came in from the west side, and then we went down on the east side, down into a mining camp called Kenilworth. That was the hike of a lifetime. We only did it once, but it was really <laughs> exciting. Is that the one where you got the ride with the sheriff to come Yeah, down? yeah. Okay, Shoot. now you can go right. Did you guys get in trouble? No. When we got down to the bottom, we were planning on following the railroad tracks to go back home because there, there used to be a railroad line going up there to take all the coal out. We got down to the bottom, we were resting, and some uh, sheriff's deputy drove along and everybody in the town and didn't recognize us so he asked us what we were doing who he was and what we were doing so we told him oh we had our dog we had a cocker spaniel with us so there was the three of us <laughs> dog and then friend Clyde hers and he says well, where are you going now and I said, he says well we're going to go home we're just going to follow the railroad tracks and go home he said just get in the car I'll take you home and we sure was <laughs> glad that it was a long road <laughs> yeah <laughs> a long walk going back home. And if you look straight west, as far as you can go to that mountain range, there's a bunch of coal mines in those mountains. That's over where Sunnyside is. And Dragerton. Huh? East. East. Straight east. Did I say something else? West. west. Sunnyside what? Sunnyside Town is near oh, that town. Okay. Okay. Now we turn right. All right. This wash right here is called Drunkard's Wash. And all of the oil wells and gas wells around here, there's no oil wells, they're all gas wells. They're all named after Drunkard's Wash. Drunkard's Wash unit number so and so and so. Oh. Is that because it wobbles all over the place? Yeah. Okay, it's slow down. Kind of a in it. We're not going to turn here, but this road right here is the road you have to follow to go over on the south side of the Farron Place to get to it. Robertson Lane? Yeah. All right. We're going to make a left hand turn up here. Not too much further. Um, That's Alice. Not this house, the next one. Turn, turn left right here by that. Right up to this car. Turn in here. Right here? Right here. Yeah, left here, I mean. Okay. Well, they've cleaned up the weeds around this place. Well, is this like an underground house? Okay. Yeah, the basement house. Like the one I lived in when I was a little Alright, just pull over here to the right and stop it. Okay. You can shut your engine off. We're going to talk here for a few minutes. This property right here used to belong to my Grandpa Waterman and Grandma Waterman. Mm -hmm. In fact, the house on the left is all surrounded by trees is the house that they used to live in and I've lived in there every summer for years and then the house on the right right here that basement house uh, also belonged to my grandpa and then he sold it to one of my uncles and they lived there for a while and then one of the other uncles lived in there for a while we still owned it in fact we, the estate, Waterman Estate, 
kids owned this owned this uh, house here up until a couple years ago and then we sold it to some doctor he bought it for twenty five thousand dollars <laughs> and uh, but it was absolutely horrible inside and I, oh just the house just the this. house okay this this over here this building right here straight ahead and to the right is uh, used to be the old milk house because my grandpa was a dairy farmer okay and he milked a lot of cows and that was my chore in the morning and in the evening in addition to farming is to come down and milk the cows so <coughs> in the in the room straight ahead with the glass brick window was the chilling room where and in the back is where the cows come in and we fed and milked them sure and then pumped the milk up <coughs> to the front of it and chilled it and run it into a into 10 gallon cans and then my grandpa's brother, my grandpa's name was George Washington Waterman. Right. He had a brother, Arthur Williams. Huh? <coughs> Arthur <coughs> Arthur Waterman, who actually run the the dairy, the uh, not the dairy, but the milk processing milk processing plant. Oh, okay. So he would come and buy the milk from Grandpa and then take it up to his place and homogenize it. Yeah. And pasteurize it and then bottle it and then distribute it all around the county wow. so I spent a good many hours in that building right there over oh, really? anywhere from six years old to 18 yeah. okay. and then behind this stuff on the left is where the corral and the sheds and everything where we fed the fed the cows there used to be a big stack of hay back there and in fact, a few years ago, we come down here with the Thompsons, and Brian took the kids and went back and took a bunch of pictures of some of the old machinery. There's an old de hay derrick back there. <coughs> Over here to the right, you can see that there's a wash that runs through here. Yeah. So all the trash would just get dumped over the wash. Huh? Where is the chicken coop? <clears throat> the chicken coop, <coughs> right over to the left where all that big pile of firewood is. Yeah. There were three chicken coops there, and then right here to the immediate left where that puddle of water is, was another chicken coop. Because my grandma Waterman, <coughs> she raised chickens. And gathered the eggs and made pretty good money just gathering the eggs and selling them to the to the <coughs> Utah Co-op. But the, uh, Grandpa sold this land to some I can't remember who it was, but they haven't done anything with it since they bought it. They're going to develop it into homes, but they never did do it. But there was I think there's 32 acres of ground in here at one time that he owned. And he sold the ground, but he still kept the mineral rights. And right north <clears throat> east from us, probably about a quarter of a mile or less, is another gas well. And because we're in that in that immediate vicinity of that gas well, we're getting royalties off that well also. <laughs> but the well is on somebody else's property. Sure. So let me guess, he sold a bunch of land but kept all the mineral. <laughs> Sure, you can do that. Yeah, because Jeez. down here, there's coal <coughs> everywhere. And across the street, Maybe just immediately across the, gas, the highway, so. my Uncle Russell used to live, oh. and he owned some property. And then across the street and north, probably about 100 yards, is a couple other houses. that I got one cousin still lives there, and then the house immediately next to it, my Aunt uh, uh, Alice used to live there until she died a few years. It was a family compound down here for a yeah. long time. Well, the only buddy that's left down here is I got a bunch of cousins on the Larson side that still live down here. I don't know where any of them live except the one of them. And she lives just, you know, where we stopped at that dealership. She lives just east of the dealership up on the hill there. Your mother's land was right just on the oh, other yeah. side of Just it on the other side of that tree right there where that horse is standing. My mother owned that land up until a few years ago, and then we deeded it over to Gary. 
and he <clears throat> kept it for a couple of years, and then he sold it. It's like missionaries are to my uncle living here. Huh? Missionaries are either coming here or living here. They didn't just walk into the house behind us. Yeah. Walk. walk into that house trader or that basement house or the other. Yeah. Arthur's house is north of your mother's land. Yeah. So that was another piece of the puzzle. How many acres was it? That caterpillar, that caterpillar. looks really familiar to me. In one of our videos, that caterpillar used to belong to my uncle Henry Mills. And in some of our old movies that we made into videos, you can see him driving that thing. Building a dam down in southern oh, no Utah. Kidding. Yeah. Wow. That thing's been sitting there for years and years and years. <laughs> yeah, Michael's used to have a, well, my dad and my uncle Bob used to have a caterpillar. But I'm sure it was long and years away before he got a missionary. Well, missionaries are leaving. And this, this house right here to your left, and you turn around a little bit, you can see it. Mm -hmm. It's got a fence all the way around it and to trees all the way around it. None of those trees were here when I was living down here. Mm -hmm. They all grew up and were planted later, and the fence was never there. There was a little chain link fence there for a while. But my grandma Waterman was an avid gardener. She had a big garden just on the north side of the house and was always growing flowers and shrubs around the house. But... That tree right over there looks like it's been there a long time. Now look how big that trunk is. I bet it's, yeah, it's huge. eight foot in diameter. <laughs> Remember when we had the, well, that's not an apple tree, though. Remember when we had that Waterman reunion? And the theme of it was in the shade of the old apple tree, because yeah. there were apple trees over in that area. That was before your uncle built this house. Now, my, my grandpa Waterman also, and we won't go down there, but in addition to this farmland right around here, you drive another, oh, another 10 miles south, you go down in what's called the Miller Creek area. Mm -hmm. He owned a bunch of farmland down there that uh, I don't know how many acres, but we that's been sold, but we still own the mineral rights on that. And then you go another 10 miles from that, is another piece of farmland called the Worry Place that um, we own the mineral rights on, but sold the farmland. Hmm. What are these two buildings here? Huh? No, what are these two sheds? Is that a they garage? Put up since I left here. Oh, okay. The thing he talks about, he doesn't own anymore, but he has those are rights. So did he do that? Practically so sell a this, lot? This house over here was my grandma and grandpa Waterman's water. house. Yeah. And this one what belonged to my, the last owners was uh, Uncle Henry Mills. Before that it was Harvey Randall. Okay. Harvey built him another house here about a couple of miles away uh -huh. to the west of us. And then Henry, Henry used to live out in Miller Creek. He moved up here and then he built a house across the street. Now his son's living in it. Because my uncle Henry and Aunt Maxine, they moved to Canada. He was a regular horseman. That's all he wanted to do was just ride horses. Right. Yeah. So did he come from Waterman? Just like Okay, so this, this house directly across the road, the White House. That was my uncle Russell and Aunt Lena. That's where we stayed when we came down on that trip and the trader broke down. Oh, okay. That's where we stayed. Okay, now stop. See this first house on the right up there? That white one? My cousin Henry Mills Jr. lives in there and then on the house on the other side of that 
used to belong to my Aunt Alice and Uncle Archie. He was killed in the coal mine, and then she remarried, but still continued to live there for many years. Then the house on the other side is a bunch of my mother's cousins that used to live there. Oh, I have one other thing. When we got the, when we went on our, our camping trip with the, ta with the trailer with the flat tire. Yeah. Came and stayed with Lena and Russell, which is in this house. Well, that's what I told. That's what you said. Yeah, and I just left that. Huh. While they were fixing our place. Oh, very cool. So they lived here, but the the land that they farmed was, was oh, it's fair in place. Okay. Right here, across the street, we used to grow corn in that ground, uh -huh. and then down south into the Miller Creek area. Okay. They're on a lot of land down there. And these tracks are going back and forth here all the time. Those are the savage trucks hauling coal. Very cool. I've got moving pictures of all my cousins That's standing out barn here by the mailbox. Here. Huh? The old barn over there. Yeah. Is that part of the... That belonged to my uncle Rollo Jukes. Hmm. That's a, on the other side of the wash, yeah. isn't it? There's a wash. Yeah. So, What'd you say about the mailbox? Right here by the mailbox, I've got moving pictures of all my cousins standing here waiting for the school bus. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that was when we found in Grandma Bonnell's collection. Yeah. Wow. So was this practically a big family? Area? Where are we going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, this piece blank piece of property right here is where Grandma Bonnell had her house trailer and gave it to Gary. And then this house right here belonged to my Uncle William, uh, Arthur Williams. Okay, I so this is where the house trailer was that Grandpa wanted them. Yeah. yeah. I, re I do remember coming down and visiting yeah. him in that. Yeah. No. Not yes, we not. stayed here one night. With Grandpa, not Grandpa Waterman. Yes. When did he die? Oh, he was back in Idaho, but he always lived in his house, didn't he? No, he lived in this that house trailer here after he sold the property for a while. Oh, okay. I swear I remember coming okay. to I a did. trailer. I didn't come with you then. Yes, you did. Oh, okay. Yes, I did. Yeah, and it was a single wide. Yeah. Silver colored or? That looks like an electric fence around that property right there. You want Tyler to run out there and catch it? <laughs> It's no signs. Well, I see all the wood that my uncle used to have stacked up there by the garage is all gone. Looks like there's one somehow back there. Huh? Somehow back there. Yeah, Those other trees. Yeah. Sure. Piled up, piled up. A lot of trees. Huh. Can we go down? Okay, let's move on. All right. So your cousin is still alive? Yeah. In that house? His name is Henry Mills, Jr. Anybody that your dad's cousin is younger than he is, because he was the oldest grandchild on both sides of the family. Okay. One of those places over on the hill is Sandra's house, isn't it? Yes. My cousin Sandra lives over there and they don't have one stick of grass growing by their house. <laughs> Probably like it that way. <laughs> well, they couldn't get any water up to it. Yeah. Where are we going? We're going to go back up to the Elks Lodge. And see oh, yeah. See what, what their hours are. Yeah. And then they'll go back and we'll go up to Helper. I wanted to mark where that house, I wanted to mark where that house was on the map. 
Oh, at this railroad crossing right here, we just went over. Yeah. My Aunt Mitris was crossing that thing and got smacked by a freight train. Oh. Put her in the hospital for a good many weeks, and she never was the same after that. Actually, a little more detail on that. There were two trains, one going one way and one going the other. As soon as the first one cleared, they thought the track was clear. They sat and waited for the train to go by. As soon as the train went by, they started to cross it, but it turned out there was another one coming from the opposite direction. Go ahead. So she got hit by the one coming from the other direction. Ugh. Is that the movie house you just went into? Yeah, there was two of them here. Right? Uh, we want to go straight ahead and go around behind the Elks here. very first Garmin that GPS I had didn't have any built-in maps it just reported to you in Latin long and then showed you a cookie trail well, yes turn right in here yeah plus it's uh, it's uh, almanac got grossly out of date and we couldn't update it so uh -huh. I had just a lot of cars parked here yeah 